Hello everyone and welcome to this assembly video for Crix's Dual Colossal Kit of Kraken and Sepulchre for War Machine Hordes. Specifically War Machine, of course, because Colossal, you know, they're war jacks. So, this mess before you is majority, or at least everything I could fit in frame, of, well, the Colossal Kit. Both kits entirely, and I don't recommend doing this with this model, as much as I love Doing this kind of thing with models or just a giant pile to sort through like Legos. There is a specific reason I don't recommend doing that with this model, at least not entirely. And we'll get to it when I get to that part in the video. But for now, I'm just assembling the legs. Specifically the housing for like the legs themselves, the things that, you know, for most part, they don't look like the legs, especially the front ones, without those bits, the front armor pieces. And there aren't those on the back. No armor on the back. They're just even tiny legs, which is weird for the crawling units, although it's very similar to the Stalker, which has big giant arms, but that's because those are used as weapons. It's just weird how it's like tiny legs in the back, big legs on the front, although they are heavily armored, so that kind of helps, and this game's gotten rid of a lot of rules, if not all of them, for, you know, takes more damage in the front versus takes more, or takes more damage in the back, really, but yeah, stuff like that. Um, I I think there might be one in Kador, but eh, stay with me. <laughs> so, straight on to the other leg. These don't take a lot of time once they're figured out, and as you can see, this is like I do with many of my model assemblies, is just left in positions to help me figure out where things are, and so I can just assemble it quicker. These aren't randomly scattered. There is a picture that I could always post that is just like, Oh boy, here's the mess, kind of like I have also for the Lonely Tree with Kingdom Death Monster. But the legs go together nice and simple. There's They've gotten a lot better with their plastic model kits of just like, this is how this goes together. You can almost do it without instructions, but thankfully this has instructions to go with it. Because this is, I believe, over 120 pieces, and it's easily over 100. And some of them are just weird in how they go together, but not too weird it's more they're very precise which again gets onto the uh don't lay stuff out like this at least not as simple as i did you if you do so you want to be more precise and honestly i'm talking about more of the smokestacks so here's the actual air quotes body of the model uh i'm more thinking of how the other jacks kind of work how they have a very much a centerpiece and then the crawler jacks like the Leviathan and such have more of a lower abdomen kind of thing. And then, yeah, the whole upper body is just two pieces for the most part. It's really three or four, but the majority of it, as you can see, is just two. It's just a giant empty shell. They've got this grate that goes on the back weirdly. I don't know why that's a separate piece. It wasn't just it's like, oh, we want you to get paint underneath that. Nope, it just goes on right to it. I don't know why that's not just modeled on like a lot of the rest of the piece. Uh, the front piece, this one, is makes sense to be a separate piece. So before I get any further into just rambling on about what I'm doing, this is a magnetized kit. And is the point of like the video just being an assembly and everything like that? That and I actually still have yet to paint this almost two years later after assembling it. we oh boy, that's gonna be fun. But yes, I do magnetize these kits and everything. Uh, this is also part of the front. It's more the lower part and it kind of gets in the way of where the head goes, but you can and I would recommend gluing it on with out, like it, like, it doesn't need to be magnetized. Glue it on if you're magnetizing these. It doesn't get that much in the way of the head unlike some other piece. So on to the smokestacks. This part is really sped up, or sped up more, I should say, because otherwise we'd just be here forever. This is kind of like the hands from the Phoenix of Kingdom Death. Uh, second Kingdom Death reference, because ooh, awesome models. Where, honestly, these need to be going in very specific slots. It doesn't look like it, except for with the middle ones, or like the rows are very clear, but no. They are very specific, both the lids and the stacks. And, it, like, it's hard to mess up which piece goes with which for the stacks in terms of the left and right piece of each. But the 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 lids are hard to mess or The lids are actually easy to mess up. And where the stacks then go is also easy to mess up outside of the row. 
like where they go in the row, which row they go in, not hard to figure out. Where they go in the row, that's more difficult, and then the back ones are easy to mistake for the front ones in a different row. So, if you want to lay it out like this, be very precise. But honestly, I recommend just leaving it on the sprue and cleaning them as you go. The main reason I do all of this is because also it was just usually when I do this, it starts as a giant pile, and then I'm just pulling pieces out and cleaning off excess bits with a knife, and then I organize it afterwards. So either be very precise when laying these out, or you're going to have a nightmare of figuring out which one goes where. Otherwise, these things are gorgeous and they make it look great. I don't know why there's so many of them, but it's still really cool. You know, the, the game is very much as much as some people like, oh, it's a steampunk setting. Oh, it's more a fantasy setting going through an industrial revolution, which means they're still at the point of steam technology for the most part. Like some people have moved past it either on an individual scale or whole factions, specifically thinking Nemo on the individual and convergence on the, nope, we're just past this or, you know, things like that. But Cricks use something similar to coal, but it's really screwy, the necrotite or something like that. It, it's basically death-infused matter. It does, I don't even think it needs to be actually coal. Like, dirt works just fine, because, like, wherever a battle with a lot of death works, it's one of the reasons that they just constantly raid, is so that then afterwards, after, like, majority of the like other factions moved on with whatever they could you know save from it including their dead because they know what's going to happen to them they then have like thralls come in and then just dig up the dirt and then it's fuel it's really weird but it's also awesome and very nice so that's all the smoke stacks on there and honestly that's a lot of the build in terms of time consumption then i'm just grabbing legs and assembling them this is back when I still had trouble keeping things in frame for painting and assembling, so I apologize about that. Uh, this is probably actually only the fourth model I ever did with my larger, air quotes, camera rig, because again, my camera rig is really just my phone sitting on a bunch of wire frame things that you would use as dry racks that I found when moving into an, one of my apartments. The one that I started my channel in, actually. But yeah, it was just, they were just there. I'm like, oh, I can just stack these with other boxes. I use actually mini crates. So these assemble just, like I said, very nicely and everything. It, it, there's nothing hard about the legs at all. They even fit onto the base perfectly, as you can see there. And then, you know, that also fits on just fine. I, I, as you can see, I don't recommend gluing the lower part of the... Of the this piece until after it's on the legs because it does get slightly in the way, but you can glue that on before you want to magnetize stuff. And there will be a specific point in the video that I will point out of like, this is when I stop to magnetize stuff. That's even a little sort of visual. Don't glue those on. <laughs> you can, but it will be slightly more annoying. I did not put magnets on them, but I do recommend two small magnets, one on each so that they will stay together. So, at this point in time, the model is fully assembled before getting into either kit, and this is where I'm doing both things. So, here's one head and the other. I can't remember all of, like, which one's which, but I know I have them separate here. I didn't glue on the front arms to begin with because I thought I could magnetize them or they might make a difference in the kits. They don't make a difference in the kits, and I don't think it would be a good idea to magnetize them. I would recommend pinning these pieces together. They are the only thing that's broken for the model since I've used, like the first time I brought it out, which actually wasn't that long ago, and like one of these tentacles just broke, thankfully where it was assembled, but it broke in a way of just like, this is more annoying to put back together. It also didn't help that the location I was at, the, it feels like the AC was off, so the glue was never going to dry anytime soon and I had a game to play. But yeah. Uh, was my first post uh, COVID, uh, well, uh, post uh, COVID um, War Machine game. It was fun, uh, but that's not what we're here about. So these also go together real nice, but you want to make sure you've got the correct size because these are two different assemblies. Even the headpieces, hands, claws, whatever you want to refer to them as, because they also have drills on them are there specific which ones the left and right it's very clear which one pieces go to which it's just not very clear which 
one is left and right. So another thing you want to be very careful on if you want to lay stuff out in advance. But also just making sure which one goes where. These fit in nice and simple that are very clearly. You could try to magnetize them, but you would probably want really strong magnets and or also pinning them. Uh, here's the top gun for the Kraken, I believe. So that's probably the Kraken head on the left because, yeah. Oh boy. Uh, and I know that's the bottom gun for the Kraken because the Sepulchre does not have a bottom gun. It's got all the spindly things you can see on the very right side of the screen. It's got the guns on the side. So, uh, again, a lot of this stuff goes together real nice and easy. Uh, instructions are still very helpful, but it's just... It almost isn't needed. The vents are a little confusing because I believe the vent pieces, like the actual fans on them, these vents, are very specific to the left and right. And as much as you would think these could just go on the same on either side, nope, they need to go on very specific sides. Also, even if they could go on the same side, you would want to be very specific with the magnets. I know for those pieces and the guns on the sepulcher, the things that just go on, which are pieces you do not want to glue on, the magnets are weirdly in there. So while I did not take the time to show on film where the magnets go on everything, like the magnets for on the chassis itself will go right above the divot, kind of like circle with a shape coming off of it. You'll kind of see it close to after things are magnetized, but actually very early on. Like that's in there just fine, drilled and put in, but the magnets for the guns or the vents, depending if you're doing the sepulchre or the Kraken, need to kind of just be wedged into the corner of the outline for going on that whole shape there. Here's the little spindly bits, which I find really cool for the sepulchre. These will magnetize just fine. You just need to put one magnet into the whole thing. You can glue all of these bits on beforehand. This is another case of make sure to lay them out properly. They go in very specific pot, uh, spots and everything. If you don't, you're, well, you're going to have a bad time. Not as bad as the smokestacks, but still it gets kind of annoying, and I recall actually having to rip some of them. Yeah, yeah, there it goes. I didn't end up cutting that out. Yeah, you have, I had to rip some of them out because they were in the wrong place. That's how precise it is. Like, even dry fitting it. Which is, when I say lay it out because it's that precise, you will probably not be able to tell via dry fitting. Like, just be careful when laying it out or don't lay it out at all. Because, yeah, it's it can be a nightmare. Because, again, it's 121, I think, was the precise number of pieces for this model. Uh, it, it, I don't know if any model in this game has more pieces. And at some point in time, I'm going to assemble a second one of these. And hopefully paint them. The second one will not be its own video. Hopefully I'll get around to painting it, which would be a video, but it doesn't say love you, I digress. And here is the guns for the sepulchre. I love these things. They assemble very nicely, but also I just love the way they look. The attachment, they, they hold on a little flimsy with magnets, but I used some larger magnets so that they would hold on. But they're, when you magnetize things, you're always going to get some flimsy parts here and there. With the, like, There's at least four points of magnetization on this of just like... The head, the gun, nope, sorry, five. The lower gun slash spindly bits, the upper gun, the head, and then the fans or the side guns, depending on which model you're doing. And, yeah, it's just, and that's not even a lot. Like, some of the jack kits, especially the Kador, like, Spriggan uh, Devastator one, it's just, like, if I ever get around to magnetizing that, that's going to be a lot. But, yeah, the guns go together real nice and easy. It's hard to confuse which um, muzzle or whatever, the end of the gun barrel, goes on which one. Like, it's all really hard to confuse. They made this a lot more clearer. I haven't had these break, although they did have a bit of trouble staying together at first, like you can see right there. And, yeah, they just look really awesome. Uh, it, it, like, if it wasn't for the fact that I don't want four of these lying around and I don't want to pay for four of them, I would have actually preferred having some sepulchers actually assembled and not magnetized. But the whole point of magnetizing these is to save money and because, let's face it, when are you going to have more than two of 
and the injuries on the field, you know, their field allowance too, you would need a third mall. But, you know, some drilling later. And now the magnets are all in. Everything is glued entirely except for the arms here because I didn't think I would need to. But like I said, you can see the one magnet there. That's where you're going to want to put that or a similar place. You can see the magnet for the gun very clearly right now. Uh, and like I said, there's also one for the head. The head gets a little screwy to fit in. Uh, the like the plating, you can glue it on if you want to, but you're going to have trouble getting the head on and off if you do so, especially if you don't like etch away some space or something like that. But there's the gun. Like I'm applying actually the pieces for the Kraken right now. Um, these clearly don't stay on well during the uh, during the video. They actually fall off multiple times in both assemblies. And to keep them together, I would put magnets on the front. It would close that gap completely. So, like, one on each right next to each other. But, so, here's the entire Kraken, which, you know, big gun and everything. Oop, there it goes again. And then take those off real nice and quick and go on to the sepulcher. It's nice and simple. It took a bit of planning. I didn't have to look anything up for this. Uh, as some of the heads, they're a little difficult to get in there sometimes, but that's about it. But they're not too difficult. And as you can see, even if the plates were there, you can get the guns on or the vents, although they do, again, kind of get in the way. And then that's the sepulcher. So that's the entire build. And again, pieces will still fall off. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to press that like button. If you think somebody else will enjoy this video, feel free to share it. Either way, I hope this video gets seen more. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and press the dislike button. I won't mind, but please leave a constructive comment as to why. Also, feel free to comment in general, such as, would you like to see me do constructions for any of the other dual kits? Not likely to happen anytime soon because I, one, gotta get more magnets, and two, those take a lot of time, but I do actually have all of the dual kits lying around ready to be assembled. Like, still new in box, kind of ready to be assembled, though, not cleaned up and ready to go. Or would you like to see more stuff from War Machine Hordes? Be that more assembly or painting. I do have other things recorded of painted, so, you know, I could get around to posting more of those. Or would you like to hear me talk more about the game? Be that from a gameplay perspective, a setting perspective, or anything along those lines. Would you like to hear me talk about the role playing games? The Iron Kingdoms is my favorite role-playing setting, like my favorite fantasy setting. I would love to sit down and read the book, but I'm not a very good reader, and I do still kind of want to do that. Like, I have the dragon one all pulled up ready to go, because yay, dragons. But I digress. If you'd like to see more like this, be more assembly videos, normally painting and assembly videos, my unboxing videos, or my detailed overview videos, all three of which I'm willing to do for Privateer Press products, and anything else that I might do on this channel, feel free to subscribe. Regardless, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye!